Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Month in Music for the month of May 2022. I'm your host. My name is Tyler, and of course, I'm joined by the boys. We have Brennan. What's going on, folks? And we have Kyle. How's it going, everybody? So this was a thick month in music. Let me tell you what. Um, usually, we have to kind of scrape the bottom of the barrel to get anything for the clickbait section. Um... We have not one, but three clickbait uh, stories today. Ooh. One of which we just found out about as we were getting ready to record. Um, but I'm going to hand things off to Brennan first because we're going to go over a topic that came up uh, earlier in the month regarding Kurt Travis and Ben Rossett and the whole Eternity Forever drama that is that has popped up. Brennan has all the information for that. So Brennan, enlighten us. Tell us, drop drop the hot goss about Kurt Travis. Ooh. What's the tea, dog? <laughs> Spill let's, the tea. Uh, let's give you guys the scuttlebutt. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> pretty much, for those of you who follow Kurt Travis and, of course, Ben Rossett, um, they had a project uh, a few years ago now called Eternity Forever. And, I mean, they have... Rec- they released like a really short four song EP that absolutely slapped. Like it was awesome. Um, you know, I remember the first time hearing fantasy, I pretty much begged Tyler to play that shit over and over and over again. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> to this um, day, basically. <laughs> the yeah. whole night. <laughs> to this day, <laughs> it's still fantasy. I played yeah. six <laughs> times. <laughs> to, to this day, it's, it's pretty much an inside joke. But, uh, <laughs> so earlier this month, found out a bit of drama about the, pretty much the monetization of Eternity Forever. Uh, it seems like Ben Rossett had owned the rights like fully to the whole, you know, you know, masterpiece that was their EP. And on Reddit, ironically on the DGD Reddit, uh, you know, Kurt put up, you know, a post saying like, you know, him and Ben Ewing, who was like the third member of that triad, uh, pretty much wrote everything like Ben really didn't deserve a lot of credit. Um, but since Ben had owned the rights, you know, they weren't getting anything financially from this and Ben Rossett, um, going off memory here, but I I remember like checking out the tweet, uh, pretty much alleged the opposite that (laughs) Ben Rossett had pretty much written everything, you know, working with, uh, uh, Brandon Ewing and Kurt Travis had to pretty much be dragged into the studio kicking and screaming to actually record and finish, you know, the EP. So a little bit of back and forth as far as like who actually deserves what. Um, a little bit of drama, which kind of sucks because, like I said, I really enjoy that EP. I know a lot of other people do. Um, but eventually it got sorted out. Uh, you know, Kurt Travis and Brandon Ewing finally got, you know, some monetary you know, some monetary gains from it, you know, finally got some rights on their own, some liberties. Um, can't remember the actual royalties. That's the word. There we go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of it for a sec, but they finally got some royalties and stuff for their work. And it all seems to have come to a very good resolution. But for a minute there, I was thinking, damn, there's a lot of drama going on in here. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gl- glad to see that end on a good note. For sure. So. And, uh, and I mean, hey, even though... Uh, they don't like Ben Rossett anymore. At least we got gold necklace out of it because if all this drama hadn't happened, uh, that would have never happened. Granted, we would have gotten more Eternity Forever, so it's kind of a horse apiece, I guess. But, like, there's a silver lining. There's a very... There's a gold lining, maybe. Oh, see, what I, see what I did there? Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah, so... Uh, Go listen to that EP if you haven't already, because now the 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 Curdy boy and and Brandon boy will be getting the the money from that. Um, yep. Fun stuff. Less fun stuff that's also related to the DGD Reddit. Oh um, no! Uh, while we were prepping for this, like literally five minutes ago, I'm on the DGD subreddit because I was looking for information about what we just talked about, and I stumbled across a post from Tillian. On, on the DGD subreddit. Um, I'm just going to read it verbatim. And then we can discuss. Because it's... I had no idea this happened. And it's kind of wild. Um, so. The, the post in question is entitled regarding recent allegations. Never a good start. 
This morning, I was made aware of allegations from someone regarding a brief relationship surrounding the weekend of Swanfest. Admittedly, this was a time when I was very vulnerable, but I can assure you that every sexual act was purely consensual. Since then, she has reached out to me multiple times, wanting to see me again. We met again later in Cleveland on tour. Kyle and I were at Cleveland when we saw Deal. them. So that's, that's <laughs> We were there. <laughs> he didn't say that in the thing. That was just a... Oh, you know, yeah. He was, was like, mean. Kyle and Tyler were yeah. at the event. <laughs> They're pretty cool guys. <laughs> Back yeah. to the, the post. Um, and I decided to end things the following day. It was an amicable split, so this story coming out is extremely surprising. I would imagine that the story in question is she blamed him for sexual assault. Uh, not fun. I have text threads saved that paint a picture of the nature of our brief relationship, but I would prefer not to have to air that out. It pains me a bit because I thought there was a general lightheartedness and sweetness that wasn't mentioned in her version. I take the subject of sexual assault seriously, and I want to firmly reiterate that there was no moment of anything happening that was not consensual. I understand that in a new sexual relationship, there is a period of figuring each other's preferences out. But there is not a doubt our physical contact ever crossed boundaries into anything resembling assault. My general state of mind surrounding the weekend was filled with grief, and I was leaning on alcohol as a crutch to get me through it. After Swanfest, I did the tour sober to properly grieve and got a lot of support from the band and friends. Although her story saddens me to read, I won't express any ill will toward her. I hope this clears things up, and thank you for listening. Tillian. And then he provided screenshots of all of their text conversations which I didn't open. And that's... So apparently somebody blamed him of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kyle, I think you found, like, yeah, stuff I, from the person who brought that up. Yeah, like, it was, like, a person who I will not name, just so, like, people don't, like, you know, go flame her. But, I mean, like, like the five people that watch this show. But <laughs> yeah. I, 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 just in general, because, like, this is, like, legitimate breaking news, I think. Like, yeah, literally, this is the only like, time we've ever had news that is not a month old on this show. Yeah, this is, like, literally minutes, I think. Uh, so, but, no, uh, I found, just randomly stumbled upon her on Twitter while we were doing some quick research on this, trying to find out information about this. And she talked about how, you know, I, she was like, I'm the one who came out and said it. I was the accusation. She wrote a very long twitter thread that i did not read every word of but i skimmed over read various chunks of it uh with details as like we we had a lot of we had like sexual relations and a good bit of it was like very understood but then some of it was not she was like the stuff that was like good was fine and then like he took it too far is the way that she seemed to have framed it um and it ended it out with, like, it's very odd for me because I've always been a big fan of the band. So, like, trying to say something about this was very weird for me because, like, I've always, like, idolized them and now I feel odd. Um, and the biggest thing that kind of, like, caught me was that she said that she had reached out to people that have known Tillian in the past and said what happened. And they were all very supportive of her and, like, the way she felt, like, possibly, like giving the idea that, like, this has happened before. I don't know for sure. I'm very much just, like, you know, pulling from, like, theory and what, what the wording of some stuff she said. But, yeah, very interesting. Um, obviously, you know, like he said, he said he was, like, grieving for obvious reasons, you know. Right. Um, but, like, it sounded like he had a pretty decent support system around him from what he said, and I'm not surprised at that at all. Like, they have a really, like, solid team around them that are there to support each other. Um... So I don't know. I mean, I, I just there's not enough for me. Yeah, I guess yeah. like <laughs> we there there's not enough there, and we have not done enough research as of no. We just found out about this, um. So we can't really like take sides or anything. No. Like there's not enough evidence there that we've seen to mm -hmm. formulate an opinion. And obviously this is developing, so there's probably going to be more information by the time this episode actually drops because it's going to take me a few days to post this. Um. So. I guess if the story develops more, I might, like, put a little thing in the comments of, like, hey, we learned some stuff. But I don't know. Yeah, this is just, this is not us saying, like, oh, so-and-so is lying or, like, Tillian's lying or, like, uh, anything. Like, we're not taking sides. We, no. we can't because we don't have enough information. We are simply stating right. this is a thing that is happening right now. And boy, howdy, it's... Uh, not 
good. Uh, things like these are never <laughs> good. They happen, honestly, more frequently than they should at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, if if it did happen, that's really terrible. And that is a very serious thing. And if it didn't, that's also kind of a serious thing. Your false allegations and stuff. But yeah. uh, we don't know. So we can't uh, fully comment yet. In, yeah. in general, I feel like as a as a like an audience to this, like the internet, all of us watching that aren't the people involved, I feel like everyone like this always happens where like people just start slinging shit and like you yeah. know, sometimes it leads to yeah. cancel culture. If I could just say everyone just step aside and let it happen, really, because like these kind yeah. of things aren't really supposed to be projected on the internet. Obviously, it is because of like the day and age we're living in. So just let them settle it, and then like once everything comes to light and everything, yeah. whatever does yeah. come to light. Then if you want to say something, whatever, but, like, just leave them be. As we know, Tillian's been grieving from his own personal stuff. She seems like she's pretty impacted by it with, like, the whole, like, she's always been a fan of the band. Now, if this is true, it must be a really difficult thing for her to go through if it were true. So, let them be. Yeah. Let them settle this. Like, don't don't go crazy yeah. against them. Definitely yeah, general. well said. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be one of those guys that tries to throw a dart in, like, a pitch black room. We yeah. have no idea what's going on here. Yeah. yeah. Don't be Twitter today, okay? Yeah, Let's just please don't. Yeah, just don't stay Twitter. away from Twitter. It's yeah. not good. Yeah. Elon Musk, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, oh, uh, I just I discovered that, and I thought, hey, we've never had breaking news on this show before, and this is very relevant because it's the the band that gets us views when we talk about them. So yeah. the 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 image of our simphood. Yeah. Yeah. So really? I, I'm wearing their merch right now. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to bring that up. And uh, some more lighthearted Dance Gavin Dance news. We're going to finish off the clickbait section with uh, Kyle. This is something that you brought to our attention uh, in the little group yes. chat a little while ago. So if you yes. want to talk about this. So at the end of March, a little a little Twitter account was created called Rat King Extermination. I was like, that's interesting. So I started following it. And they started making posts as if they were legitimately the Rat King Extermination Company that we saw in all the videos so far. The singles that have come out, you know, the first one really pushed into it with uh, uh, Don Broco's lead singer, like, singing about it with the numbers and the fucking sh shitty rats <laughs> dancing on the screen and shit. <laughs> um, and they were, like, posting, like, we're the best pest control company ever. But one tweet in particular stood out to me. And I'm going to read it to you now. And then I'm going to point out to you why it was interesting to me. Yeah, I'll put it on screen as you, yeah, as yeah. you read it. Here it comes. We are the best pest control and termite protection service in all of the land. We send them to rat heaven. Call 1-530-R-A-T-K-I-N-G, rat king, today. Let us ease your mind and rid of those ghastly rodents as your, at your earliest convenience. We'll ship them to rat jail. As you'll see on the screen... There are random letters capitalized. What do those letters spell? Well, gosh darn it. They spell long night. It, wait, wait, what is it? What, long, long, Jesus. long nights. Long nights in jail. I didn't have it. I was trying to actually read the letters. I thought you had it written stretch. out like on I, a separate thing. I didn't thing. have that pulled up. And I was like, uh, you literally well, said it to nights, us. God. Long nights in jail, which uh. is the title of another song. From the album, Tillian did say like a week or two ago that we were getting another single in the coming weeks. It's now been weeks, uh, so perhaps Long Nights in Jail is the next single. Uh, tracks with the imagery of the music videos. Hmm. Yeah. Also, all the tweets have been deleted from this account. The, ex uh, the account still seems to exist on Twitter, but all the tweets are gone now, which is suspicious. Now, this could be just a bait. This could be somebody making this for fun. They got me. Oh, I've been gaffed. But... It could be somebody from the DGD team, and it would be an interesting way to, like, promote the next single, so. Yeah, I dig it. I mean, it's not the first time that a band would have taken this approach to promote shit. I mean, fucking Stan Atlantic, back when, like, I think, like, Death Wish came out or something, they had, like, a whole, like, website that was all, like, encrypted and, like, full of, like, weird, like, ARG shit, and then people, like, figured it out, and it said Death Wish, and then that was the name of the song. So it's like, people... People dabble in the in the the fun in the dark arts. shit to to get people hyped. I hope it's true. With our luck, the single will probably be out before this episode hits the internet, <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> and that would just be the worst timing. But uh, that's how we do. 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah, fun stuff here in the clickbait section today. This is the most clickbait we've ever had ever crazy. in, in a yeah. clickbait section. Yeah. It's just a, just a thick, more like thick bait. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Who? Wow. Oh, wow. And uh, immediately moving on and not talking about that joke I just made. Kyle said that you, you said that you had a game that you wanted us to play today. Ooh. And boy, howdy, am I excited and intrigued because I love games. So welcome. you better not fucking disappoint me with this. It might welcome to my game this week. As you can see, if you click on the link of to, to my to my my playlist, um, lots of good songs, lots of bangers in there, great stuff. There are two singles though that I really liked. One of them by Our Last Night. One of them by Loveless. Both covers of middle of the night a popular song on the radio so internet i present to you kyle's pop punk parody pick'em where we will send our boys off Ooh. to hear both of the songs and then give a on-the-spot breakdown in comparison of our two pop punk covers of the exact same song this isn't a game kyle it, it kind of is you lied to me <laughs> it's, it's like it's kyle's Pop Punk Parody Pick'em! Whoa! So what we're gonna do is you're gonna see us cut away and then cut right back after the boys have heard the songs, and we're gonna talk about which one's better of the cover of the same song. I mean, I'm game for this, but I just, I was expecting, like, like, multiple choice or something. I was no. expecting, like, a quiz. No, like this a... is more on brand for us, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to be on brand because this is what we kind of do. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Uh, time travel. Whoa! Shkabow! Whoa! Oh! Whoa. Whoa. We listened wow, to the songs dude. and definitely didn't talk about chess for a long time. No. All right, Kyle, what are we doing? All right, so we are first. I want to I wanna start. We're going to go song by song. Okay. And I want you to give your thoughts on the songs and then pick one that is the superior. Okay, so first we're going to start with Our Last Night. They released theirs first with some yeah. drama involved. Um, not, I mean, Loveless was like, I love those guys. Stop fighting. And then the drama subsided. But Our Last Night released theirs first, so we're going to start with theirs. Brennan, what did you think of Our Last Night's cover of Middle of the Night? Hmm. Comparing the two... I really like it. I think instrumentally, it's definitely a cut above. Because, um, like, Our Last Night is really good at, like, you know, taking, like, these covers and kind of, like, fitting, like, a little mini breakdown in there somewhere. Um, like, I, I always think it's pretty neat. Like, where do they, like, fit that in the track? Um, usually, like, in the breakdown of the song, but it's not, like, an actual breakdown. It's, like, kind of, like, a musical breakdown. But, um... I think instrumentally, it definitely gets the nod. Uh, vocally, it's still really good. And they do add that other layer of, like, screaming. So, I mean, it's uh, it's, a, it, it's a very good cover. And Our Last Night rarely disappoints on covers. Sometimes, but it's it's rare compared to, like, the volume that they put out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very solid track, though, for sure. I'll say nice. that I, like... In the same vein as you, I definitely think instrumentally it's stronger. Um, I think my main takeaway from the Our Last Night one is just I like how aggressive it is. Um, it really, like, takes the song and, like, completely turns it on its head, completely, like, genre bends it, um, more so than I think the, the Loveless one does, but we'll get to that, I guess. Um, yeah, like, the Uncleans added on it just adds like a whole other element and i just i've been listening to this cover like all month um i admittedly didn't listen to the loveless one until 10 seconds ago but uh <laughs> i i don't know i really like this cover i've never even heard the original song because i don't listen to like actual music uh other than shit i like <laughs> so like uh i don't even have that to compare it to uh but yeah i really liked our last night one i would give it a, a solid like is a is a there's a pen out of band cover, you know? Ooh, ten out of like, band. <laughs> oh, um, no, I definitely, I agree with all the points you guys said as well. I like, I, I think the instrumental, like Brennan said, is a cut above. It, I, there's like that whole lead up to the breakdown where like even before it like drops out to build the breakdown, like you got the guitar like doing like that. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. And then like they drop down, have the really good build of the breakdown with the screamo. I think that does add a lot to the original. 
and something that the Loveless cover does not add, which I think interesting point. Now, boop, 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 swip it, swip, 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 swap it over. Got Loveless's cover, a little different, a little less screamy, a little less breakdowny. Tyler, why don't you start it out with this, oh. this one? Give me, give me it. That really caught me off guard. I was not okay. <laughs> well, uh, give me, give I me. think I think the Loveless one is good. I think, um, I I don't want to say like vocally that it's stronger than the Our Last Night one. I would say that like he just, I mean, objectively, he just kind of has a better voice. Um, and I think like the way that his vocals are mixed, um, are probably better. And that was kind of like my main takeaway from the Loveless one. I didn't think that it was like, I personally, after hearing the Our Last Night one and then kind of going into that, I personally was not a fan of how it was not as aggressive as the Our Last Night one, but that is just personal preference. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still think it was very well done. Um, very well executed. There's not any like problems with it. Uh, by any stretch so i think it was very good it was just a very different energy compared to the our last night one i would say if i'm gonna compare the two directly which i might be jumping the gun a little bit here i would say no, that i uh i think that if you're just comparing like like vocals to vocals then loveless has the edge but i think if you're comparing like the full composition i would give it to our last night personally but that's just me now brand do you feel the same? Do you have any different takeaways? What you got? I mean, I'd say I'm pretty much on board. Like, this, like I think Tyler kind of hit it on the head with like the Loveless cover, um, vocally. Like, I like the dude from Loveless just has a way better voice. Like, yeah. um, even in like other works I've heard, you know, like their past record that came out, you know, really strong vocal performance. And, like, the song does everything in its power to kind of, like, push him to the forefront and, like, everything else just kind of, like, background. Um, and, like, deservedly so. Like, the dude fucking, he's got pipes. But I think our last night adding in, like, the wrinkles that they do, especially vocally, um, I just think that this is kind of like a battle, like, head-to-head -head of, like, different styles. And right. like Loveless, like yeah, the dude, like clean vocals, the dude far surpasses anything that our last night could hope to achieve. But our last night adds like a whole new dynamic with like a more like aggressive style song, you know, actual like unclean vocals, breakdowns, like you know, it's like a more like full bodied sound than the Loveless cover. But the Loveless cover still slaps because that dude is ridiculous and sounds amazing. Yes. So yeah. Hell yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah. So a consensus has been reached. Wow. So <laughs> if you you boys had to take a vote on which which pop punk parody that you thought was better, pick well, which which which, which you picking? I I picking I picking pick our last night. Brennan? I uh, I think I'm gonna have to second that just because as I've said it's more of like a full bodied thing. Yeah. While while I mean this is no slight against Loveless, but that's just. Yeah. The cards that were dealt. It's like like the loveless one is like a three musketeers. Like you bite into it and there's like a creamy cloudy center, right? But that's all you get. Our last night is like a fucking Snickers bar. Like there's there's nuts in there. Like there's there's <laughs> multiple things. Nuts and caramel and nougat and whatever else is in I don't even remember what's in Snickers. But it's more than one thing, and that's my point. And that's why it it's more that's why it satisfies. Wow. wow. And that's why three musketeers just Wow. Musks your tears. I don't think Three wow. Musketeers has a slogan. If they do, I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> three Musketeers. There's three of Are us. They... Eat it. <laughs> I think back in the day, like they used to, and you used to see a lot of like advertisements for it, but I haven't, I haven't seen that in years. I'd look it up. So, but I don't want to go on a massive tangent. That was a, that was right. a fun segment, Kyle. Yeah. I, I appreciated that. Yeah, that it was, was fun. It, it, for what it's worth, personally, I like the Loveless one a little bit better. And my main reasoning for it is that I felt like a lot of passion in that one where I felt like our last nights was a bit, a little bit lacking. I do think everything I said though about the, our last night, our last night one was like, like to a T. Like I think instrumentally it takes the edge, whereas vocally Loveless's takes the edge. And, um, as a person that's heard the original a handful of times, I feel like the energy and like emotion that I feel from Loveless's, uh, like kind of hits that same level that 
uh, the original does, which I think was was cool. And that's what I was question. Interesting. Yeah. Who wrote the actual song? <laughs> I can't say their name. If I'm being honest, uh, I don't know how to me, spell let me it. Look it up. I don't know how to say their name at all. Oh, um, you don't know how to say it? No. Uh, Ellie Due? It's very odd. Okay. Um, There's no one I've ever heard of. I just didn't know yeah, it yeah. was like It's yeah, like it's, a newer it's person, but top gotcha. 40s trash, let's be real. Well, well, yeah, that's why I've never heard it before, but I didn't know right. if it was like a person that has made music before that I've heard. No, yeah, no. <laughs> that's that's pretty normies. I didn't know if it was made by like Kesha or something. You know? yeah, sure. <laughs> or like, you uh, or like uh, Go, going from fucking... timber to something like actually like composition based <laughs> I, a I bit of a, a, bit of a jump her. maybe she changed uh, Claire, uh, apparently not but, yeah, but she, by the way, she is set in her ways I appreciate you boys checking them both out I figured you guys were going to go with the, with the Our Last Night one which is why I want to do this because I personally like to love this one more and I want to hear people gush about the Our Last Night one because like, they're both great in their own ways similar yet very different and I think that's cool check them both out yeah. Loveless also released another single about Voodoo Dolls. Like, if you have my Voodoo Doll, give me give it a hug. That was a good song. Our Last Night also had Uninstall, I think, came out this month. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, check that another, out as well. Another single of theirs that I just, I felt nothing about uh, in any yeah. way, shape, or form. Um, uh, but that's oh the well. great thing about Our Last Night. They are, I think Brennan has said this, like, multiple times, uh, and it's so accurate. They are, like, the most... Uh, they're consistently inconsistent yeah <laughs> yes they're the most consistently inconsistent <laughs> band ever <laughs> <laughs> like so sometimes they drop an absolute fucking heater sometimes they drop something that's totally mad and mediocre but yeah yeah that's also the good thing is like, I, I feel like they never really miss they just write stuff that's like cool so what's next like i i'm never i'm never like completely like oh this is bad i'm always like okay or i would sort yes. of just say like I guess they don't ever miss like they always it's it it's like they're at a shooting range right and I'm standing directly beside the target that they're firing at and they're always hitting that target but it's never hitting me and I just sometimes it gets really close and I feel the wind and I was like that was almost something I would listen to multiple times but like some <laughs> like a lot of times I'm just like I'm watching it hit for other people and I'm just not in that experience and then sometimes They'll just they'll just crank one out and I'll just get hit in the face and I'm like wow now I remember why I like this band. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, well, that, that was a mini tangent. Yeah. But post in the comments below which cover you prefer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you hopefully this that? happens again. Do you hear what? that in the distance? Oh. It's chugga coming. chugga segue. The train of the dead has returned, and with it, two new gen <laughs> songs. This is canon now. This is who's bringing I them to the this. club from now on. <laughs> as the last episode, um, <laughs> it's the segue train of the dead, and it is bringing two tasty gent songs to the club. Only one can make it in, and Brennan is the 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 biggest bouncer of them all, and <laughs> he's running the show. Yeah, it does not make it in unless I say so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this month, um, two kind of gent powerhouses. Uh, well, one's definitely a powerhouse. One's kind of still in ascension mode. Uh, released a couple tracks that I thought were pretty tasty. Um, yeah, so let's get right into this shit. So the first one, of course, if you guys pay actually pay attention to the channel, you've already seen Tyler kind of react to this video and the song. And let me tell you, this thing is an absolute fucking bop um, from a band that hasn't released anything for a hot minute. And that, of course, is Playing God by Polyphia. So let's take a quick listen. I'd react, but I already have. Yeah, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler Tyler's reaction bank account is totally dry yep. for, <laughs> for playing God. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolute fucking bop. Yep. But <laughs> moving on to the other track, uh, this is from a band that I showed Tyler and Kyle probably a couple years ago now, and 
they had a song called Real, which absolutely just blew my fucking socks off. And it featured so, people from Polyphia. <laughs> yeah, which featured Tim Henson from Polyphia and Clay Gober, I believe. But uh yeah, that that song absolutely rips. Um they released kind of like a few singles since, you know, not really reaching that level, but you know, kind of getting up there with some of their stuff. This song actually reminds me a lot of like their artificial void days. Um kind of kicking it back to like that writing style at least for like good chunks of the track but without further ado the song that's going up against is called let you choose who's going first i have to go first because this has to be said you said that we were talking about two powerhouses we are not there is a powerhouse and there's a fucking <laughs> shed and dinner is a shed i don't <laughs> care for this song shed. in any way shit. i was very excited uh, i was like a new on process cool i felt nothing uh, like i was uh, i was gonna do a reaction video and i didn't react so i just didn't upload anything <laughs> like, uh, it Christ. was just like <laughs> Like, like you were saying, like, real is like, wow, this is the greatest song ever. Some of their other stuff, like even Candyland that they released last year, that made it in, like, my top five singles of the year because it was, it was pretty tasty. And I listened to this one, and I was just like, damn. I guess Bummer. this is, like, objectively good, but fuck, do I not care. And then if you're comparing it to, like, the new Polyphia song, which, like, yeah. is so just mind-numbingly my fucking dad likes the polyphia song he doesn't like any shit that i listen to that just speaks <laughs> volumes about how talented polyphia is and how god tier that song is. i mean it's polyphia it's hands down no contest right <laughs> it's not it's not dinner time Get uh, that out here. No yeah dinner Roy, tonight kyle you look scared <laughs> um, i was gonna say it, it gets the the roy luke <laughs> stamp of approval that's pretty that carries some significant weight uh <laughs> Kyle, uh, sorry to put you into this buzzsaw of Tyler, but I need your reaction and your vote. <laughs> Shave my feet and call me Jimmy. Playing God's better. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, uh, I was gonna be kind of nice and be like, you know, dinner has some cool things going on, and I was gonna be like, ah. Uh, I was worried that me coming in being like, I don't know, it just didn't catch me as much as the other songs from a process. It was going to be a hot take, but no. apparently not. Uh, I thought the song was fine, but damn, have I been more interested by everything else I've heard from them, legitimately. And this isn't bad. Yeah. Just everything else has been more, like, ripped me, has caught my attention, has moments where I go, ooh, ah, fireworks. Uh, Playing God is a fucking masterpiece, dude. I yeah. legitimately <laughs> have listened to it more than anything else this month. Which is saying something. Once you see my playlist, holy shit do we have bangers on here. DGE released something this month, and I have listened to Polyphia two times as much as I that song. I forgot that yeah. Pop I Off know. came out this month. Isn't that crazy? Exactly. Pop Off came out this month, and then everything else happened. Isn't that absurd? Yeah. Like, no. Dude, okay, playing God, like, acoustic cover for or not cover, acoustic version of a song for Polyphia, as the first thing in like two years or whatever, didn't expect it. But damn, is it tasty. It transitions halfway through to like a little bit more like jaunty as a, the word that comes to mind when I hear that. <laughs> a little whistle. I'm like a little bopping around a little bit and still got the, the tasty licks fun. all through it, man. I, that song is like legitimate masterpiece. Legitimate <laughs> masterpiece. It doesn't get much better than that, folks. I'm not messing uh. with you. Wow. I have to vote for it. Polyphy is just. Yep, speechless. Yes. That's where uh, it leaves me. It's so good. <laughs> no, and being the third voter of this, you know, powerful council, uh, I can literally do nothing but agree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I couldn't really find anything to challenge playing God, even like remotely close. Uh, and like I said before, dinner kind of brought me back to like unprocessed, like old writing style like artificial void right um i think their older album was called covenant or coven or something like that but uh 
So I, I found that interesting because I'm like, you know, maybe they're like kind of throwing it back because like reels more like pop gent kind of if I were to like slap a new genre out there in the yeah. world of genres. Um, but that, but I mean, even that's like, you know, masterpiece, like, you know, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart fucking levels of unprocessed. But playing God, like the first time I heard it, <clears throat> I was just blown away, floored. Like, couldn't believe that, you know, kind of after taking, like, a huge hiatus from, like, actually releasing shit, that you know, their first track coming back would be this fucking hard. Um, I mean, I I literally, I literally listen to it at least once a day, like, driving into work or fucking, you know, at home or whatever. I mean, this thing, this is a true powerhouse <laughs> compared <laughs> to a shed, and I hate that it's come to this, but uh, playing God by a landslide vote of 3 and 0 will enter the gentleman's club. Wow, so, finally. Well, yeah. if you know what happens to dinner. Yeah, dinner it, dinner it, gets it, eaten. That's it's, uh, <laughs> it's dead husk becomes part of the train and it Bummer. sails on back <clears throat> to the mountain that it came from. <laughs> really trying to expand <laughs> the lore, paint a picture. <laughs> uh, it's called like like Mount Sticks or something like that. Yeah, sure. Sticks, not spelled like the river of the dead, just spelled like sticks, <laughs> sticks. The, the wood thing. <laughs> I was, I was going to say spelled like the 80s band, but they spelled the same way. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just a pile of sticks that is so tall that it yeah. is a mountain. Yeah, and, and every night they light like an effigy to all the songs that didn't make it. Damn. We really got to bring uh, Pidgey to me baby back with, with this energy. Yeah. <laughs> comment step below. Up. If we get yes. one single comment to bring that show back, I will bring it back in a heartbeat. Yes. Damn. And we're not going to so get that fun. comment, so we're never going to do it. <laughs> well, Sorry, do? folks. But we, you know we what we are going to do right now? We're going to close out this hot, tasty episode of Month and Music <laughs> with picks of the month or top picks or whatever the fuck i call it i change the name every month but it's the part of the show where we talk about our our yep. favorite albums and singles that dropped during the month of may um who would like to go first first person to raise their hand gets to go all right kyle <laughs> brendan didn't even try nope. <laughs> <laughs> i was what's funny is like i was about to itch the back of my head so i started with my hand i was like oh <laughs> yes yeah. i'm gonna get the itch and then all right rapid fire because god i have great stuff that i want to say at least something about all of it first of all playing god we talked about it i'll come back to it trust me i'll come back to it pop off dance gavin dance banger super solid track not as much synergy but like on more listens of it i like it more than i did when it first came out i will say uh still not like super high echelon dg but still Sater released their first single from their new album coming out uh, in July, I believe, July 1st. Really good. Some really interesting time signature stuff. They even said on Twitter they did a song in 1516 time signature, which we didn't even realize was a time signature. It's actually yeah. insane. I didn't know either. That blew my mind. I genuinely I was like, don't know what that's going to sound like because I, don't, I didn't know that was a thing. I'm so pumped yeah. for it, though. I mean, like, it's... Sick as fuck sound. We're gonna so. we're gonna be getting tool on steroids. Like. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be getting power tools. <laughs> power tools. <laughs> That's what they should have called the album. Just power tool. <laughs> 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 oh, man, that's so oh glorious. Oh, my God, this episode was a mistake. <laughs> uh, moving on with the month. Corey Henry released music this month. Of course he did. Everyone else did, so why not? Song called What a Pity. Pretty cool. Didn't stand out to me at home, but I love his stuff, so I liked it. It was fun. Uh, My Chemical Romance. <laughs> oh, yeah, the song. they're back. I forgot about that. Uh, in the most <laughs> mediocre fashion, I felt so little. I was like, this is mixed bad, and I didn't understand it because some of it was just mixed so bad. And I was like, I've never been more disappointed. That's a hot take, I guess. So I think some people liked it. Uh, yeah. Moving right along. Rain City Drive. Released a single, Waiting on You, my favorite Rain City Drive single yet, probably. I fucking Same. love that shit. It was really, it really good. very sad I didn't do a reaction video to it. I didn't think it was going to be worth doing it for. And, and it's there it the is. best Boom. one so far. It's the best one. So <laughs> catchy. I, I've listened to it a ton, too. Um, Makari released a single that really I fucking loved. Phantom was super cool. A little different, but I loved it a lot. Hell yeah. Um, random fun pick. Uh, 
Louis Thoreau uh, has been trending on TikTok for a minute for his money don't jiggle jiggle it folds thing. He actually recorded the full thing <laughs> and made released it this month. And I put it on my playlist and it's fun and it sticks in your head and I liked it. Uh, both of the middle of the night covers, which we already talked about. Um, Stacy Ryan, who I mentioned I saw in concert uh, like a month ago now, two months ago, uh, released Fall in Love Alone. It's a banger. I heard her perform it live. I was like, I want this to come out. It came out this month. Super good. Please check it out. Stacey Ryan's awesome. A marionette released a single, Simple, that fucking pounds. I love that shit. If you're into it's, that, you know. I'm really into, into that, and I loved it. Um, <laughs> if, you like new, if you like new marionette, I mean, more power to you. I love Ooh. new marionette, and I really liked it. It was really fun. It's very catchy. It has some really cool instrumental stuff going on. Um, I checked out that Neck Deep song. Cool. Uh, it's cool. neck deep. Yeah. Uh, saying, like, cool. Here's the thing. Cool. That, not to interrupt you, but I, I was going to talk about this too because I, I listened to it and I was like, this sounds exactly like every other song they've ever written. And yet, I actually like it more than the entirety of their last album that they put out, even yeah. though it sounds so similar because it starts off with just like the pop punk drum beat. So immediately I was just like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, I, the more I've listened to it, I'm just like, I vibe with this a lot more than the entirety of their last album. And part of it's probably just because lyrically it's very fun and relatable, but mm. yes, that was my two cents. I'm sorry for interrupting. It's all okay. good. Damn. Stuff. Yes. Only other one I want to give a feature to uh, is Nate Wants to Battle and his Give give Heart, Give Love Records, whatever company he had. I don't care remember the name of it. I feel bad. I uh, released a cover of the theme song from Spy Family, which I started watching this month awesome music in that show like actually awesome i love the music it gives me cowboy bebop vibes and i love it and the show is also awesome like musically cowboy bebop story and visually super cool check that out anime reference but at the end of the day my single of the month it's gotta be playing god that song actually fucking rips one of the best <laughs> songs i've heard in the last years well like, actually i love it it's now that it's in the fucking gentleman club it's the best song that's in there um Damn. Single of the year so far. I'm not. I'm not messing around. That shit's incredible. Um, albums. I had a ton of shit come out as well. Fucking. We got. We got. We got. We got. State champs. It's fine. Um, Harry Styles released an album. Fucking pop. Throw throw that pop shit in there. Whoa. Whoa. Boy, am I right. creaming my jeans over Harry Ew. Styles? He's okay. Uh, he tried some really weird shit that I like. There's a lot of horns on this album, and immediately that makes me like it. So, like, at base level, I was in. Uh, only song I'd say check out is Music for a Sushi Restaurant. It's the album opener, and it doesn't get better than that. That cool. song is really fun. Um, House of Waters released an album, a band that's like a, like a, more like a jazz classical band that I really like. Check them out. Best album of the month, though. Boom, it's fucking Stan Atlantic. Fear. Uh, Hell my yeah, album yeah. of the year at this moment. We're about halfway through the year, and it's the way runner, way ahead of everybody else. It's my favorite album that's released. It's, Same here. I, was, I have been listening. <laughs> I have listened to that album. Like, it's, it, if I have nothing else that I want to listen to, like, I listen to Playing God for five times of the day, I'm hitting shuffle on that album, taking out garlic bread, and jamming to literally everything else. Literally I jam to exclusively garlic bread. Sometimes that's I just fair. put that on loop for like an hour. Just listen to them talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> talk to I, I'm not messing around, guys. This album, it's going to be hard to beat. I will say, lots of great albums coming out soon. Uh, yeah, we're about to get hit yeah. with just... I mean, yeah. fucking this week, we get uh, Memphis May Fire and Red Handed <sighs> Denial. And Damn, the, that's going to be a my bop favorite, fest. <laughs> my favorite band of all time yesterday announced that their newest album, Snarky Puppy, is releasing an album in September with a new single coming out next week. And I am stupidly excited. They haven't released shit since like 2019. So I'm wow. mucho excited. I don't know if that's the right way you use that word. But <laughs> mucho I did. Excited. I'm mucho excited. Well, you, you committed hard enough uh, to it that I think it it, it, worked. it made it. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's it for me, though. I will uh, say lots of great stuff. But the album and single I picked are still a step above. And that's massive, massive testament to them because they're that good. Tight. Uh, no, that's good. Um, so I guess it's my turn. Yes, it is. Uh, as far as albums, um, didn't really have a whole lot come out. Um, hands down, the winner is "The Price of Dreaming" by Hollow Front. 
Um, they are, you know, the album kind of shows them like branching out a little bit. Uh, they're one of those people refer to as like architects core bands. Like, you know, a lot of like really good riffs, breakdowns, shit like that. Um, it's kind of cool to see them like write a little bit more, like a little bit more on like the clean side of things. Um, still with some nasty riffs, still with some just knockout, drag them out breakdowns and the album's just chock full of them. And all in all, I mean, the other two records I have on my playlist, you know, Silverstein came out with a record called Misery Made Me. Solid record, but their old shit's fucking leagues above anything new they're ever going to come out with. And then Upon a Purting Body fucking came out with a record. <laughs> I forgot about them. Jesus. Yeah, called Fury. And it was their old stuff like what Red, Bright, and Green or whatever that old album was called is like still way better. I, um, in my opinion, they've only ever written one good song. And it's yeah. the Texas one. That's the only song worth listening to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. It, they, they have some other stuff that's pretty good, you know, from their record, which I think literally came out like 10 years ago. But, yeah, it's... They're, they're old stuff. They're never going to surpass it. I mean, I hope they do, but it's never going to happen. But, yeah, Hollow Front, The Price of Dreaming, pretty much dunks on everything else that came out this month for me. Now, singles is where it gets tricky. Uh... I mean, the obvious selection, of course, is playing God. I mean, but, you know, to highlight some others, um, Lorna Shore, who's a deathcore band, you know, came out with Sun Eater. Gross. Um, yeah, so a, a lot of people know their track to the Hellfire. You know, that excellent ending breakdown and the vocal performance on top of that. Um, for is them Sun to Eater top that. Good? What's up? Was Sun Eater good? I didn't check it out, but I saw it got released. Is Sun, it, Sun Eater any good? Yeah, I mean it's I like it. Um I think they probably uh, like, they're, like to make a crazy analogy here to the new vocalist like tenure with the band his name is Will Ramos. Um <clears throat> they're kind of like Linkin Park in the fact that they released all the really good shit early. Like you know, like they like they peak like right off the bat. And for them to try to top to the Hellfire is going to be very challenging. And, you know, I, I'm looking forward to see, like, if they come out, like, a full length, like, what's going to happen with that. But Sun Eater is still a very awesome song if you're into Deathcore. If you're not into Deathcore, then look elsewhere. This is... <laughs> look elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely for, like, the heaviest of the heavy. Yeah, like, Lorna, Lorna Shore is, like, borderline <laughs> noise core. It's just, oh, yeah. it's, <laughs> no, I, 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 that's why I didn't check it out. But I was yeah. like, I saw people talking about it and I was like, yeah. oh, I'm sure Brandon will mention it. So, yeah, <laughs> so I'm it's, curious. It's like, it's a physical assault on the senses and some people react to it very well. Some people react really poorly. So if you're just, into that kind of music, Sun Eater by Lorna Shore slaps. So just hearing their name out. makes me kind of like go. <laughs> 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 um, one song that really surprised me um, is from a band that I had never heard of before until hearing this track. And it's kind of funny because it reminds me of like Call of Duty MW2 days. And that is No Scope by Killstreak. Um, what a name. <laughs> yeah. And it, it even has like Call of Duty like samples in there. It's like kind of hilarious. It really? Oh my God. Yeah, like, like right before the final breakdown, you hear, like, you know, uh, insta-kill and, like, shit like that. Um, <laughs> it's pretty... But but the vocal performance, like, my man, like... Like, I have no idea who he is. Like I said, I've never heard of this man. But my man fucking tears it up. Like, especially with that ending breakdown. Um, very, really impressive song from band I've never heard before. So I'm, I'm definitely going to keep my eye on them if they release newer stuff. But the inevitable is now upon us as far as the <laughs> top selection of the month. And that's playing God. I mean, Polyphia, um, they are a true gent powerhouse. Um, for them to not release anything in a while and then to literally hit the middle of my forehead like a bullseye with this track is just awesome. It's everything I hope for from a new Polyphia release. And I mean, this song is going to be on repeat probably for 
eternity because it is that fucking good. So, yeah. So I got Playing God by Polyphia is my single of the month. The Price of Dreaming by Holofront is my album of the month. So tight. Listen at your own discretion. <laughs> uh, my album of the month is Fear. Shocker. Wow. wow. Didn't see that coming. Wow. Much like Kyle, it is currently the front runner for album of the year. It will not uh, stay at that uh, <clears throat> level. In the coming months, it will, hopefully, if the album's dropping in the next few months are as good as we hope they're going to be. Uh, it will swiftly get drop kicked down uh, a couple rungs, but I'm sure it'll still stay in the top five. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's their best album. They're my second favorite band of all time. It's, you know, this doesn't shock anybody listening to this. Um, to throw a monkey wrench into things, I'm not going to pick uh, uh, Playing God as my single of the month because that's uh, generic. And also, I actually haven't listened to it much after I did the reaction Ooh. video, surprisingly. Um, wow. I Yeah. Uh, it's good, and I've listened to it, like, a few times, but I typically don't go out of my way to listen to, like, instrumental stuff very often, um, even though, like, I have entire playlists of music that are just, like, instrumental gent shit. I have a, I have a playlist on Spotify called Instrumental, like, it mentals, like, all caps, and I was like, that's because it's a funny pun, and then sometimes I listen to it, but I have to be in a specific mood. So I usually don't. So I've listened to it some, and it's a really good song. It should be my my single of the month, but it's not. Um, and I mean, there are just like a metric ass load of singles that came out this month. And if you want to see them all, you can look at the links below and go to our playlist of all the new <laughs> shit. You know, it's they're there. I don't think Such anyone. Such little them, motivation. <laughs> uh, don't listen to "Hang Fire" by Wind Wind Walkers because it is just as disappointing as the first comeback song they had last month. I'm genuinely so just uh, words can't describe how disappointed I am at their new sound. Um, I get that they had to kick the other vocalist out because he said the N word or something like, you know, it's understandable. Sure. Um, I, I just wasn't expecting them to completely like shift genres into like boring core. Um, like I Bore feel core. like they, they completely, they don't have anything heavy about them anymore. And there's all the, this song and the song they released beforehand are just like, they do nothing for me at all. I feel like I have heard these songs a million times by a million other bands. They're so fucking generic, and I'm just so sad. And I wish them all the best, and if this is what they want to do, great. I hope people like it. I just don't. So I'm going to continue to listen to their old stuff. Right. Makes me kind of sad. But uh, what makes me happy is uh, friggin' uh, Waiting on You. I'm just going to make that my, my single of the month, because... I feel bad I didn't do a reaction video to it. Bless you. Um, Thank you. I should have done a reaction video to it. And I didn't. I didn't have faith. And uh, and boy, boy was I wrong. Damn. That's what you get my, my bad. Um, also, just because uh, I didn't really talk at all, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave off with, there's a new band that exists now. That features the voc the former vocalist of uh, Time the Valuator. I don't know if you ever heard of them. They're like Ooh. a philosophy core type band. Uh, him and the drummer from some other band I've never heard of formed like a like a little group called F Floya Floya. I don't know how to say oh, it. Oh yeah. How do you, how do you spell but it? They had you they had their it. second single come out this month, and it is very good. Both singles are very good. So I would highly recommend if you enjoy good music. Go listen to that band and both of their singles. Um, the hymn is the one that came out this month. Uh, I don't remember the name of the first one, but they're both very good. Mm. I've listened to them they're a lot, great. so check they're those out really too. <laughs> but yeah, I am. Um, so yeah, really quick, in like a similar vein that like came out this month that I didn't mention, uh, a band called Moxie the band released their first single this month. Yeah. I'm trying to find. Like their origin, but they used to do stuff with Kurt Travis. Oh, and I can't. I think it. I think they said it was Kurt, and that's the only reason why they showed up on my timeline. Uh, hmm. God, I wish I could remember what band. What else has Kurt been a part of that I know of? Uh, Dance, something. Gavin, dance. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Mike, Michael Franzino's in the band with the lead vocalist, who's a female that I can't remember the name of, and I feel bad. Uh, but thanks. yeah, they released a song called "The Cost." this month and it was pretty cool um 
It seems like Yvette Young is going to be in a lot of the tracks on the album as well, well which I'm is also already, really cool. Yeah, Ooh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the general feel of the, the band uh, is very, like, chill, but also, like, has a lot going on. So I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, a song called The Cost by Moxie the Band. Um, check that out. It's cool. It's cool as shit. Um, I'm curious to see where they go. But yeah. I will definitely to, have to. Look, new bands. I'll definitely have to look that up. So if if Yvette, could... if Yvette Young is involved in anything, I I'm invested. Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. yeah. Even if For she real, like real. joined like fucking One Direction or something, I'd be like, well, I guess I I like them now because she's involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember whenever you showed us the piano EP, like my mind was fucking blown. Oh, I know, right? I was like, this is this is shit you would never expect me to listen to, but this is the most beautiful music I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> she is the most talented musician on earth, as far as I'm concerned. She can do no um, wrong. Apparently, Covet the band is also featured. Covet is oh, yeah, on the album. That's her band. You've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Band. like like the whole the whole group. <laughs> and uh, I guess Moxie is touring with Covet as well at the moment. So that's also cool. I would love. To oh, see and Covet Moxie's also on. touring with Tillion on his tour for Factory Reset. That's the other one. I knew there's another one. Ooh. They're opening for them, so that's cool. With Royal Coda and who is this? Tilly. Tilly? I don't know who that is, but somebody else yeah, I bet that it's I saw just, on the card. I bet it's just Tillian in a different outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Like, like entirely <laughs> different Tillian, music. But he just like pitch shift his voice down to like a, like normal levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody tell me who the people from Ox of the Band are in the comments, because I can't find the thing that it said, and I just... You mentioned a thing, and so I didn't have a... And then, unbeknownst to any of the boys, Kyle's recording suddenly stopped. Tyler wept as he discovered this tragedy as he edited this episode. All right, well that does it for today, for this for, for this month, I should say, for this month of music. Yeah. Um, this was a fun one. This was a thick boy episode. I feel like we had a lot more to talk about than we have pretty much every episode this year. <laughs> Just uh, this is a this is a fun one. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and uh, give it a like. That really does help out a lot. Um, and if you are not subscribed already to the Talks A Lot Boys, what the heck are you doing? Go ahead and subscribe, man. Make make our make our number less cool to look at. Right now it's three twos, and that's pretty cool, but we sure would like to get to 420, because that's a pot reference. Yeah. And Smoking the devil's they've lettuce. They've smoked pot before. Um, I've uh, not. Anyway, if you uh, also comment <laughs> below and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let uh, us know some singles that came out, some albums that came out that you were you've been vibing to this month. Any comments on any of the stuff we talked about today, and what you had for breakfast? Because it's the most important meal of the day, and uh, that's all I can think of. That's all I got. So, Brennan, wow, say the outro line. I'm switching Damn. it up. Yeah, I'm giving it to you today. Wow. Well, folks. We've been the Talks A Lot Boys, and we'll talk a whole lot more next time. See ya.